and share with all this armament on me? That's terrible. I thought you were being prote protecting me, John. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be okay. I, the table, I think, is strong. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. I just got to find the arm. That's all. Okay. <laughs> all right. Can you move me in? Oh, you got wheels on. Okay. How about Trivia? Okay. Okay. Yeah, that'll do. I got too much light in my eyes, so I can't see who's out there. <laughs> okay. All right, well, good morning, everybody. I'm Greg Fenvis, president of the University of Texas at Austin. I want to welcome the media here and uh, anybody that's watching the broadcast on, on live stream. Last week, we received incredible news that Dr. John Goodenough received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for 2019. Uh, this was an extraordinary achievement by a brilliant scientist, and we are so proud at the University of Texas that Dr. Goodenough has been a member of our faculty since 1986. He holds the Virginia H. Cockrell Centennial Chair in Engineering in the Cockrell School of Engineering, and is a faculty member in our Walker Department of Mechanical Engineering and the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Uh, John received the Nobel Prize for the development of the science behind the lithium ion battery. And every camera here and every phone uh, is now being powered by a lithium ion battery uh, that's based on John's scientific discovery. Uh, it's, uh, it's an example uh, of how science and discovery leads to the innovations that truly change society. And as we say at the University of Texas, what starts here changes the world. So John, on behalf of the entire university, I want to say congratulations on this tremendous honor uh, it's an apex of a truly remarkable career that you have had, uh, especially for the last three decades here at the University of Texas. And since every one of our 50,000 students has a cell phone, uh, we want to give you a little uh, memento that recognizes <laughs> the impact uh, that your discovery has had at the University of Texas with a Longhorn cell phone cover. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to introduce Dr. John Goodenough, Nobel Laureate in Chemistry. All right. Well, thank you, but I assume that I'm to answer questions. So, what questions have you got? <laughs> question the young lady is asking me. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm very pleased to have my last student as a fairly bright fellow, and that I'm very grateful for. I'm very grateful for all the support that I've had at the University of Texas at Austin. And uh, what do I see as a breakthrough? I don't know. There was a step from getting intellectual property to a technical development to where you get a useful product. I was very fortunate that the people in J Japan at Sony Corporation did the technical development of the lithium ion battery. So my hat's off to the Japanese people. Another question? Uh, what is it like, first of all, to receive this Nobel Prize to begin with? But then also you're the oldest person in 97 to get this award. So what is that like for you? What is it like for me? Well, I'm very, very happy when I'm able to get out of bed in the morning at 97 <laughs> and get myself showered. <laughs> you know, at 97, you don't remember everything, usually, so it's fine. But 
I'm very happy to go through forgetting yesterday from today and do one day at a time at my age. At this age, did you think that you were going to receive an award like this? What's that? At this age, did you think that you were going to receive an award like this? Well, you never think you're going to receive a nice award, like, but it, it happens in life. I, all I can tell you is, if you live long enough, you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been getting questions from around the world. So we have a question from the uh, UK Daily Express. What advice would you give to other people feeling edged out in their jobs at 65? <laughs> Younger people than you. Who are well, I understand. They have a problem that they retire people at 65. <laughs> I've been very fortunate to be able to come here to escape retirement in England and to be able to work another 33 years. <laughs> another question? Yeah, we had uh, Emily on Facebook wanted to know in your field what is a problem? that we don't yet have an answer for, but we need a solution for? Whew. <laughs> well, we need better batteries, that's for sure. So fortunately, there are people in this room who work here at the University of Texas who will make the better batteries that will change the world. Is that what it is here? All what starts here changes the world. <laughs> so I hope we will. Uh, on that note, we had a question from Chemistry World. A writer asked, what, in your opinion, is the most promising approach for making safer, more powerful batteries? Well, I think the first thing is you want to avoid trying to uh, use a liquid electrolyte that's flammable and uh, trying to plate dendrite-free. Uh, anodes from the liquid so that we can do and I have Hadi and his wife Aisul here from who are originally from Iran who <coughs> are working with me on good polymers and so on and I think that we should be able to do that or they will be able to do that I'll be able to just be the orchestra leader <laughs> You have to speak very loud for old ears. <laughs> Congratulations, Dr. Victoria. I have a question. What is the most biggest motivation for you to the research? Why you can keep working on research activity long term? You want to tell me? What, what is your motivation? What is my motivation? For doing research. What, what? It's interesting. <laughs> And it's, you, you, you work with nice people, and they do all the hard work, and you sit back and try to take as much credit as you can. <laughs> uh, Chuck Murray with uh, United Business Media. Uh, I heard you were in London at the time the Nobel was announced, and you didn't have a cell phone. So can you take us through how you found out about it? Uh, I think when I got home. Somebody told me about it when, after I got home. On, they were driving me home. The, Hadi Khani from uh, Iran was my driver. Not to ask him about the, how did you notify about it, the Nobel Prize in London? Well, I was, didn't, don't think I knew about it in London. <laughs> no, no. They were interested in giving me a Copley Award, which was a very nice award. And, uh, I may have been on the, on the plane here when the other things were announced. That's fine. Can I listen to your view on Dr. Yoshino's work that uh, made lithium ion batteries commercially viable? Yes. Uh, what was uh, Dr. Yoshino's contribution? Oh, Dr. Kino. Well, we uh, had developed the uh, 
LiCO2 as the cathode of the material, and while we were measuring the uh, the, uh, <coughs> uh, the diffusion of, of lithium in the LiCO2, he said, "Well, that's fine. I'll just use lithium as the as the anode," and he made the first battery, which immediately was was uh, licensed by the Sony Corporation and they made the first lithium ion battery. I'm from the end of NPR. Uh, so now that you've won the prize, what's next for you? What's that again? What, what is next? What is what next? What do you plan to do next? <laughs> 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 well, you know, I'm thankful for each new day. When you get to be 97, you're fortunate to have lived that long. So I hope, I mean, my friends tell me I have to live to 105. Well, I'll try, <laughs> but it's not up to me. Nick, anything else in silicon? We had one user on uh, Facebook who wanted to know if you've been following the recent spacewalks on the International Space Station. They're in the process of replacing old nickel hydrogen batteries with lithium ion batteries. Well, I haven't followed that, but I'm happy they're doing that. And uh, uh, I'm, you know, the lithium ion battery is pretty good, but it has its problems too. So you can't charge too fast and you can't overcharge. You can't do quite a few things. So it's a nice intermediate step, but I'm, uh, I hope they make it whatever, wherever they're going, but I hope they don't send too many people to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> we have time for a couple more. Yeah. Now, you're a big reason as to why people are almost addicted to their cell phones now, right? For powering them. Uh, what do you think about making such a discovery that people are using every day? Well, you know, you just do one step. And I was un totally unable to anticipate what would lead to because, you know, the electrical engineers are pretty clever. And once they get something that works pretty well, then they can do all kinds of things that you never even dreamed of doing. So I'm very grateful for the electrical engineers. And what is it about UT and doing the research that you're doing now um, that you think will help propel others in the future to make great discoveries? Well, what is it about being at UT that will propel others to make Oh, I don't know. Let me say, UT has been a, I've enjoyed being here for many reasons, not merely the good weather but all, and the nice city, but also because everybody at UT Austin has been very supportive and allowed us to do what we set out to do. So they left us alone. They didn't give us milestones and said, you got to do this by then. No, you just allow you to do your thing. And that's wonderful, wonderful for to have that kind of support. Any more? Oh, yeah, Laura. Um, Dr. Goodenough, what do you do when you're not researching or teaching at UT? Do you have any favorite pastimes? Do I have a favorite pastime? Well, of course, that's a very interesting tweet Trump, I suppose. <laughs> but, but, but uh, uh, and I, I like, I have a, 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 a young Chinese lady who comes and makes me some supper, and she plays my piano, and that's all very good. And so, I don't know, it's nice just to have good, good companionship at, at dinner. You know, my wife died a long time ago, so I, I'd be a lonely old man if I didn't have somebody to come and take care of me. <laughs> All right, we have uh, last. Uh, you want, we can get two more. You got one more? Yeah, one quick question. Uh, Dr. Goodenough, did you, uh, when you developed the lithium ion chemistries, did you foresee the applications in transportation or electric cars, or was that just not on the horizon? Oh, you just do one step at a time. And then, no, I didn't anticipate a lot of things. That's why the lawyers have taken all the money. <laughs> <laughs> and then 
we, we've had the joy of inventing things, and the Lord has had the joy of taking the money. <laughs> Your invention uh, spawned social media and all sorts of un unforeseen things. So fittingly, our last question is from Instagram. Our last question from Instagram. We had a user who wanted to know, how do you stay inspired? How do I stay inspired? Well, it's very nice to work in a community where people are doing interesting things. And so you stay inspired because you have, you have colleagues that are interesting and they have ideas and you bounce them off each other. Remember, dialogue is sacred. It's sacred for reconciliation and it's also sacred for learning. So don't be afraid to expose your ignorance and be sure to enter into dialogue. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.